Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Vulcan Report. This report is for trading on Monday, July the 18th, 2016, and it is also an end of day report for the closing day of Friday of last week. As you can see, the Dow Jones futures contract hit a new high of 18.493. And it did that late Sunday. And you can see now it's just hovering up there now. Market is in the technical overbought area, but it is trying to lock in as it continues to march toward 19,000. I do believe that that is exactly where the market wants to be headed is 19,000. So that's about another, we'll say 500 points from where we are now. Very powerful um, upward thrust, even though technically looking on the chart, you don't really see it. And that's because this is nothing but the work of the Fed to keep the market propped up amongst all the propaganda and weird stuff happening in the world. It should also be noted that not all of the markets are following suit like this. And as we move on in the video, you will see that. Now, going forward, the Dow is very well supported down to the 17,000 level. So 17,000 wants to be the new floor here. So don't know if that will be tested anytime soon, but for right now, the market is uber bullish. Here's the situation. If you look at the Nikkei, you see quite a different picture. This market is in a negative pulse wave situation, but it's not hitting new lows. It's actually range bound right now, but the downtrend is still intact and it's the market still way under the Kumo cloud. Technically speaking, the Nikkei needs to get back above 18,000 in order for us to say, hey, stocks are the place to be right now. It's still up in the air right now. If this market can even continue, just to break out, it has to continue to have a massive rally this week. This market needs to close above 17, let's say 17,400 even. Let's round it up. Say 17,400 even. If it can close above 17,400 even, then goodness, that's that's saying a lot, all right? That's saying a lot. That's, that's, a, that's still a lot of movement. Just to break initial resistance, it needs to get above 17,300, okay? Hence, you see this right here, 17,300. Ah, who, who's to say? I still see a shortcoming. This is overbought. This is not locked in. Nowhere near locked in. It's overbought. So a pullback could be coming this week. Will this market lead the other stock indexes to the downside? That is the question. If you just to just look at it, you can see that it is overbought. So we'll have to wait and see what the algos have to say about this uh, going forward. See if we get any uh, crash alerts, rally alerts, and so forth. All right, look, take a look here. This is the Nasdaq. The NASDAQ is quite a different picture than the Dow. It's well supported under the Kumo cloud. And that's going to come in at the, um, let's say, like, let's round it off, say, the 4170 level. Okay? That's way down here. Okay? Tough to say right now, but this one doesn't seem to be moving like the Dow is moving this is this is a scattered type of a situation this is more so I think a glorified range not really necessarily an upward trend because everything looks kind of broken off up in here there's a lot of weirdness I, I know the brexit and all that but you, you you gotta admit this is this is a strange type of a pattern Yes, the trend lines 
are smooth. Yes, they show an upward trajectory fashion, but they're not separating the way they should. This is a flat sideways pattern. If you take a look at it, you shouldn't see sideways like this, them stretching out elongated like this. They should be moving in, a, in an upward pattern if this was a trend. This is not a trend. This is a sideways stretched rubber band. And it's in the overbought situation. Trying to lock in, wants to lock in, but it's weakening here. That's not normal. It's not, it, it's not elongated upward like the Dow was. This is very curious. I would not be surprised if I saw a, um, uh, a crash alert today in the algos. You hear me keep saying that because I haven't run the algos yet. I'll be running them after I finish this video and then I'll be updating the website. But for now, I, I'm questioning this. I would not be surprised. This is interesting. So we'll have to see how this plays out. But not looking like the Dow chart. The NASDAQ is not looking like the Dow chart. All right, looking at the S&P 500. See, the S&P 500 is more like the Dow. Okay, see, it's, see how this is separating and pointing up. All right, so this this is this is bullish. This is trying to lock in. This is trying to giddy up and go. It wants to go to 2200, and I think it will go to 2200. Different pattern altogether up in here, almost like the Brexit means nothing. You see what I'm saying? How this is totally different, totally upward trajectory all the way. The Nasdaq is flat. That is a big, big, big red flag. I'm gonna show you the Russell, and then you'll see what I'm talking about. Take a look at this Russell. See what I mean? The Russell is we're just getting across now. Okay, the magenta looking purple line is your uh your short term if you will, and then the orange line is your your long term one. So you see the short term crossing above the long term, okay? So it's it's just now crossing. All right. But like the NASDAQ it's still kind of flat but like the Dow it's trying to give an upward trajectory but not yet look we're, we're still leveled out here we're not pointing up like you saw the the Dow and the S&P it's, it's a mixture between the two it's trying to do something it's a mixture between the Dow and the NASDAQ chart alright overbought trying to lock in a trend hasn't done so yet though got to take out last week's highs and see how it will we close then if we like in other words if we have another bar like this this week then then I can say this is definitely locking in and it's gonna be bullish and gallop up to um, you know much higher levels you're getting up to you know the 1250s and whatnot so we'll have to look and see but right now this this one's a mixture between the Dow and the NASDAQ all right that's why I say the stock market is questionable right now and like I said I would not be surprised to see crash alerts this week uh, I don't know what the how goes are saying yet because I haven't run, run it yet I will run it after the video so as you can see what I mean this is this is what I'm saying all right, normally in in most cases the the equity market is priced a lot better than the futures contracts and I've done videos in the past going into depth explaining that um, so let me pull it up now and then I'll show you what that looks like alright as you can see here this is the uh, the uh, S&P 500 ETF the, the SPY SPY see upward sloping separating here just like the futures alright taking a look now at the Q and here you can see this like the futures contract okay just like the futures contract and except for the support being below the Kumo cloud that's inside of it which is still a major sign of consolidation and weakness I just wanted you to see that up front and here's the ticker that um, follows the, um, the Nikkei as you can see the uh, EWJ same situation all right same situation so for this one 
you can see it breaking above the long-term trend line even though we don't have a crossing of trend lines yet and last time we got up here it did get shorted hard as you can see came down all right you ran up to the 1225 and crashed down to 1138 almost a full dollar move and that's a that's a huge move for something that's trading under you know around 12 bucks all right that's huge all right it's almost a 10 percent move so here you go all right so this is what I'm saying and you see the overboughtness that's what I mean by you know the the equities usually are much better pricing um, norm, normally able to, to you know not have as much noise within your within your data in the uh, in the equities it's just just normally how it is like you may you may see a whipsaw situation in the futures that you won't see in the equities so a particular support may be broken on the futures intraday but that same support won't get broken in the equities it's just a weird dynamic it's always been that way I don't see that changing anytime soon so sometimes you get better better pricing and better overall trend or movement if you trade the equities over the futures if you want if all things are being equal though you rather trade the futures because it's more leverage and bang for your buck but in periods of consolidation and uncertainty you're safer in the equities and you can you can manage your risk a lot better because with the futures it's, it's a set number of shares like the uh, e-mini S&P 500 it's set to 5,000 shares minimum you know per contract and if you want to lessen that you would have no way of doing it the only way to do it would be to go in and trade the SPY outright um, and do you know 100 shares 200 shares 300 shares and that's how you would be able to, to, to limit that but anyway moving forward uh, let's take a look now at the um, the, the currencies all right looking at the US dollar you can see the US dollar futures contract is bumping its head at the bottom of the Kumo cloud just like it should and we should see this continue to move sideways inside the cloud this market is well supported at the 94 handle very well supported and it is in a um, positive post wave scenario but our trend lines are flat all right and momentum's coming off from the overbought tough to say I want to say it looks like it wants to try to break out to the upward part of the Kumo cloud but it's probably going to meet with massive resistance at this 98 level the dollar does have massive resistance between 98 and 100 or I should say 98 and par we have a lot of resistance so this one's going to be uh, interesting to watch going forward alright taking a look now at the Brexit <laughs> might as well call it the Brexit uh, the pound sterling uh, as you can see it's coming off of the uh, the lows that, that 128 low after losing massively up in here and getting above getting about around this resistance it's having trouble up here at the 135 level as you can see uh, it's probably gonna get it pounded <laughs> no pun intended uh, oversold up in here upward trajectory kind of leveling off a little bit because you're getting toward this first level resistance next resistance is at the 139 and then the 147 so got a lot of room here to try to make up and still be bearish it can come all the way up here and still be bearish um, and you're below the Kumo cloud you have strong resistance at 147 so my guess is going to be more downside in this one. I see these rallies being heavily shorted, and then that's going to give the dollar the upward thrust that it needs to continue its upside momentum. All right, looking at crude oil, crude oil is flattening out here, up around the between the forty-five and fifty-dollar level, just as expected. Trend lines are flat. You don't see any up, no crossing, no majorness. So technically speaking, the big picture is still bearish still in a bear market 
it's trying to change that but it is absolutely flatlined here look at this flatlined and uh, anyone's guess is good where this is gonna go massive resistance at the 51 level and technically speaking this picture right here is in a negative pulse wave so we expect to see downward pressure all right so I think this week we'll see anywhere from flat to slightly lower prices in this negative pulse wave scenario all right we can see the picture a little bit better going over to the equity side for the crude oil uh, ticker OIH and that one really follows the futures really closely um, as you can see here sideways trying to come up a little bit momentum is still flat and this one is has major resistance at the $31 handle it's in a negative pulse wave scenario right now and it's just literally quiet standing still nothing happening all this right here this upward trend has stopped all right and we're entering the third week of this is the market just taking a break and is it going to explode higher it could possibly do that so you want to keep your powder dry and be on the lookout for this 31 level if it breaks like, like 3120 that's a sign that this thing is going to get up and go and gallop and get to 35 and possibly 40 so we'll have to wait and see all right looking at the uh, the UCO totally flat I don't I don't even like trading this one a lot of people like it um, I like the OIH way better than the UCO that's just my opinion uh, the UCO though is a lot cheaper so you can get more shares but as you can see it's flat and there's absolutely nothing going on here when it was positive pulse waving with the crude oil it really didn't do much you figure it broke out from 899 right and then you finally got all the way up to about fourteen dollars and sixteen cents so you had you had some good movement but you would have expected a lot more than that. I would have at least expected it to get up to 20 you know but it didn't so this one um, you know f for the you you lovers of the UCO uh, you want to see this thing break fourteen dollars basically if it breaks fourteen dollars then uh, you're in the game all right, switching our attention now to the gold. If you look at the gold futures here, you can see where the market topped out back up in here. And it's been pulling back. Still got a little bit more downside to go before we say we've hit oversold, but the uptrend is still very bullish. And these pullbacks will be used as opportunities uh, to bid this back up above the 1350 level here market is well supported at 1247 and a half and trend line is now starting to move further away from the Kumo cloud and like I said this is just the beginning of this uh, massive upward movement and I do see within the next 12 to 18 months a retest of the highs all things being equal here this is this is a really nice upward trajectory uh, for which to build a layer of support first layer of support obviously being back down here second layer of support is at the 1200 and then the third layer of support is going to be at the 1300 level so you have massive support between 13 and 12 and 1300 going forward and you need a nice strong elongated base because the next the next test of the 1900 highs is what's going to be able to push this to 2200 in the short term so this is going to be definitely uh, one to watch going forward all right looking at the GLD as you can see same thing here pulling back and market is very well supported at the 118 uh, price level and just like the uh, the futures counterpart, you can see uh, this one is having um, building support around the 125 level, and then again around the 115 level. Um, so this one, 
remains well supported as well so between 15 and 18 is, is really strong there and then between 18 and 25 so 125 is going to be the new long-term support going forward as this market marches up toward the 150 level so this also is going to be a good one to watch all right and here's the silver uh, futures uh, this one is well supported at 1688 that's seven around seventeen dollar price handle and this one is pulling back and I see the pullback here used as a trajectory to push it toward that twenty two dollar target uh, that I talked about over the last couple of weeks as the momentum's coming off um, it may not even hit over so it may just shoot right back up again but this is really a powerful looking market here going forward all right, looking at um, the SLV, same thing. So for this one, really hasn't pulled back. SLV has not pulled back. It's still locked in in this uh, this upward trajectory. So this one is looking very very strong. Uh, if this market, uh, all things being equal, if it can continue the way it's continuing, uh, then this one should be able to hit the hit twenty dollars and hopefully close there. Uh, by the end of the week, that will be a really powerful uh, sign for silver. But like its counterpart, though, looking at the silver futures, that could hinder the upward trajectory. But this market is very well supported at 1576. Very strong looking market. All right, and we'll end uh, the video with uh, Bitcoin. As you can see, Bitcoin is trying to march back toward that 700 level. It's still very much consolidated up here. Not a lot going on, just like another prior video I showed you. And this market is very well supported at the 542 price level. So going forward, not a lot of action here, but this upward trend is power is very powerful. Um, those of you who missed this, I know you're kicking yourself, but you'll get another chance. Uh, I see one of these scenarios playing out here. Uh, here shortly so just uh, sit back on this one and wait and see if it can get back above 700 if it gets back above 700 you can take a nibble you know take a little uh, a little nibble at it and see what happens uh, but again you're looking at a wide stop you know you're looking at at least a stop at 600 so if it breaks 700 you gotta be willing to risk hundred dollars on this one because it's just look how wide the range is look at the volatility um, in the Bitcoin so anyway that's all I got time for now remember bulls make money bears make money but pigs get slaughtered remember to take what you can give nothing back and if you're not able to make money on a consistent basis in these markets you need to fire yourself and hire me